Why be generous? And they exceeded our expectations. Now, if you had your Bibles open to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, you would have to go back a little bit to say who they were. And if you didn't know much about the Bible, you wouldn't even know who our refers to. But we know Paul wrote this letter to the church at Corinth. And he's speaking about the churches in Macedonia that they exceeded our expectations. When? Sometimes on the Sunday morning, right after vacation Bible school, we would have a video prepared for you and show you all the glorious things that happened here during the week. We don't have that today. But I could say they exceeded our expectations. And I could refer to our teachers. Our teachers exceeded our expectations. Even the students, I heard a prayer. Many of the students were there every single night. They exceeded our expectations. I heard Clyde McKinley bragging upon our Sunday school director who was serving as a VBS teacher. He said he was so impressed with Megan West, how well prepared she was, and how much she taught in such a short period of time. That's coming from a man in his early 80s who used to teach in a public school and sees that children these days are not as prepared to sit and to listen to teaching as they were even in his days as a teacher. But I thank the Lord that this man in his early 80s would still find something good to concentrate on, to say the up-and-coming leaders among women in our congregation, the up-and-coming are prepared, aren't showing up to wing it, but are prepared. But like Alicia, Megan didn't stand alone teaching. There were people standing behind her. They might be unseen, but they're praying for her, for her husband, for her family, for her work in the church. There are people standing even farther behind her, praying ahead for the children she will teach, that they might grow up to be godly men and godly women. And now she knows that Clyde McKinley stands behind her. They exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. We sang, your grace is enough. Did you get it? I mean, the song leader took us through an extra 20 times through that chorus. Your grace is enough. It might have been 21 times, because I thought we were done. He said, one more time, as loud as you can. And I'm thinking about last week's message, how much is enough? That was the title, how much is enough? Okay, enough of the grace, Lord. We got enough. It's kind of a... A tricky phrase to say, your grace is enough. Because you could just as easily say, Lord, your grace is more than enough. Oh, it is. It's enough. It meets our need. The grace of God is sufficient to meet all our deepest needs. Everything we pray about, even the things that we think God is not attending to, that we pray about and it doesn't seem like we see any change. In fact, if sometimes we see a change in a negative direction, opposite of what we're praying about. And yet, Paul would remind us that the grace of God is sufficient. Yeah, his grace is enough. But in this matter of giving, this grace is more than enough. 